landscape of depravity. <sighs> oh, for goodness sake. Surprise! Welcome to our new playground, ain't it a beaut? <laughs> Brr, I knew you'd like it. What playground? Where? I can't see a thing. Mr. Nasty turned me around. Huh? You have been dragging me backwards for two miles. If I only had legs to walk on, I'd... Uh, huh? Finally, we found something that shuts up square head over there. Yep, I'm gonna like it here. Oh my. So, how do you like a wonderfully wicked wasteland? It's a cemetery. How perceptive. You've relocated the Six Shack to a cemetery. Exactly! And now that you pointed out the obvious twice, I'll just say that I thought it was about darn time that we moved down in the world. <laughs> Ooh, I hope it's haunted. Of course it is. We're moving in, ain't we? I don't recall there ever being a graveyard in the middle of Sin City. Of course not. That's why I took it upon myself to improve the neighborhood. Where did you get the bodies for the graves? Uh, never mind. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nasty. I get easily distracted. <laughs> Welcome, humans, and I use that term sparingly, to the Super Shock Show. I'm your horrible horror host, Sicko Psychotic, with Mr. Nasty, Silky Harlot, and the annoying Rubik's Cube over there is Cameo, the magic talking camera obscura. How rude. If you're looking for shocks, you've come to the right place. First, we double the action with weird adventures of the mighty galactic superhero known as Starman who is sent to protect the Earth from vile villains who seek to destroy it. The Sons of Hercules also do their heroic best to lend a helping hand to those most in need while battling magic, monsters, and tyrants. But don't unfasten your straitjacket yet, because our freaky flick for the night is the Italian schlock classic Bloody Pit of Horror about a crazy executioner who is killed for executing people. Then, supposedly he comes back from the dead to kill because he was killed for killing... Uh, I know it doesn't make any sense, but some people really don't need an excuse. So, if you haven't done so already, I highly suggest you take your meds immediately because the first shock treatment starts now. <laughs>
Nuclear testing continues slowly to contaminate Earth's atmosphere with the multiple dangers of radiation. This is of grave concern to all the people of Earth. Much of this deadly radiation is escaping Earth's atmosphere and poisoning the distant reaches of outer space. As a result, it is possible that in time, other planets, such as this, the emerald planet in the Marpet galaxy, will become uninhabitable. The High Council of the Emerald Planet is now deciding what must be done. They are fierce fighters when it comes to defending and protecting their way of life. The Emerald Men are basically creatures of peace. But now, once again, their very existence is threatened by the madness of certain human beings of the planet Earth. The Emerald Men are aware that should nuclear war erupt on Earth, the atmosphere of this whole area of the universe would become deadly poison. Therefore, peace must be ensured on Earth. But now an aggressive nation, that of Mongolia, plans to take over the world through the use of hidden atomic weapons, which they're smuggling into every country on the globe. The Mongolians must be stopped. And there is only one way the Emerald Men may be able to achieve this. The scientists of the Emerald Planet have invented one of the most ingenious mechanisms the universe has ever seen. Called a globe meter, it is carried on the wrist. It enables its wearer to do three things. To fly through space, to detect radioactivity, and to speak and understand every language on the planet Earth. Finally, this great forum of the Emerald Hierarchy reaches a decision. In order to save Earth from the attacks of the Megolians, they must once more present the globe meter to one of their fellow creatures and send him to Earth. He is the creature made of the strongest steel. As he flies toward Earth, Starman's globe meter warns him of the proximity of some kind of deadly nuclear device. My radio's got bad. I'm unable to hear. The rudder doesn't work. To get all the way to Japan, it'll take a miracle. and kindly stay in your seats. Thank you. Please follow the captain's instructions and try to remain calm. Again, able to control it. Ah, that's good. It looks safer ahead. I knew that we'd make it. Didn't I say it? I've just had word. Everything is now under control again, and we are no longer in danger. 
Once again, Starman receives a warning from his globe meter that a nuclear device is somewhere nearby. The crowd welcomes Boris Zdenko and other members of the Mongolian economic mission. In that briefcase, Zdenko secretly carries one of his nation's deadly nuclear devices. certain it's the last thing you try. Your revolver hasn't a silencer. Pull the trigger and they'll hear. Try it and see how fast they get here. Uh, go on! Incredible! Just when we needed him the most, Starman arrives to save the day. But are his amazing powers enough to stop an army of secret and formidable foes? Be here next time and find out.
It's Majestas. Majestas, I was looking for you. Our whole village has been destroyed. My son was taken prisoner. Save Loth. Avenge me. Why do you say that? Who were they? The mole men. Even their name is Didn't you know they could have murdered you all? Now, when I first saw them coming out of the mist, I wondered where those strange white figures could be headed for. Then, suddenly, the leader screamed, attack, and they rode down upon my people. I hid myself, and then I saw, I saw everybody killed or carried away by the mole men. I saw it all, even the children. <laughs> gracious, there is no rest for Bachiste, the son of Hercules. But what strange perils will he encounter in pursuit of the weird and strange mole people? To find out, tune in next time, right here on Sickle Psychotic Super Shock Show. <laughs> The Sicko Psychotic Show will return after these messages. Girlfriend, this is ruining my hair. Don't worry, little lovelies. It won't hurt a bit. Ah! Okay, I lied. <laughs> help! 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 So yeah. Help! 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 We know for some of you, this is your first time tuning into our show. So with that in mind, we thought we'd initiate you with the first schlock movie we ever hosted. That also happens to be the time when we all moved into the sex shack together and became TV's favorite dysfunctional family, who many have expressed their sentiments by yelling obscenities at us. We thank you. 
So, through the magic of flashback, and without haste, we bring to you a healthy taste of the bloody pit of horror. Scared you, didn't I? Pretty groovy, eh, ghoulies? I call it the Six Shack. You see, the previous tenant had to die, or depart rather suddenly. Lucky for me, not so much for him. <laughs> that old sicko here now has himself a rad new pad. As you can see, I've already gotten most of the unpacking done. It's very feng shui, don't you think? You'd have to be a creep to live in a place like this. This is Silky Harlot, my beautiful venomous pet spider. Why, she crawled with me all the way from Schlockuvania. Of course I know a spell. After all, there are witches in my evil family tree. I came across this particular incantation the last time I peeked into Aunt Clarissa's forbidden diary. The old hag had a spell for binding the soul of a damned spirit into the body of an animal and turning it into a familiar. Eh, a cat, a bat, a box, what's the difference? Soon we'll be watching filthy horror movies to our decaying heart's discontent. <laughs> Night of a thousand killer shrews, egas, and vengeful leeches. I summon thee to corrupt our minds with visions of shock, shock, chills, and spills. Bind us the soul of a corrupt one. <laughs> You can have the shed, just don't kill me, I beg of you! Uh oh, I think it might be that man that was living here in the shack before us. I feel different. I can't move my legs. Well, that's strange. Where did my arms go? How peculiar. Am, am I inside a box? You are a box! Uh. And you will do my bidding. Box bidding? Am I at an auction? Wait a minute. You're that hideous homeless fellow who broke into my shed and tried to murder me. Drac, the gig is up. He remembers me. Help! Help! Murder! Murder! Somebody help! Oh, oh, please! Oh, we gotta shut him up. Else? Quick, grab one of our horrific oh, horror features. Oh, 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 oh. Help! Oh, uh, Astro oh, Zombies. Oh, the giant Gia monster. Ooh, the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. I'm tempted. I'm really tempted. <laughs> I'm in hell. I'm in hell. I died and went to hell. <laughs> it's not much, but we call it home. <laughs> oh, I suffer. I suffer. What do you got there? Bloody pit of horror. I should have known. This is one of our favorites. It's got that giant killer spider scene she loves. <laughs> You've seen this a hundred times. <laughs> Soon I'll be feeling the scorching licks of flames from the abyss, the seething coals burning away by flesh, the excruciating agony of pitchforks raking across my bones. Ah, shut up! Quit that! Stop! Put me down this instant! Oh, oh! Oh, what is. <laughs> Look! It's working!
this fifth day of December in the year of our Lord, 1648, by virtue of the power vested in us by our noble sovereign, this tribunal of justice hereby sentences you, the crimson executioner, to death. You will die by one of the very instruments you devised to torture and kill your innocent victims. You dared to take into your own hands the laws of both God and man. You set yourself up as both judge and executioner. You caused inhuman suffering and took life not from any sense of justice, but from hatred and self-gratification. You showed no mercy to your victims, and no mercy will be shown to you. You'll never kill me. Move along. I'll return and be avenged. Turn around. Fools. All of you. I am the Crimson Executioner. <laughs> This day shall be written in blood. No man can judge me. I am the supreme law. I shall have my revenge. The seal of this tribunal will entomb forever both your body and your evil soul. Let no man dare to break the seal. You are accursed, eternally damned, as are these dungeons, as is this castle that has witnessed such indescribable horrors. Your castle will stand throughout the centuries as a reminder of the barbarism and cruelty committed within its walls. May the dust of time not erase from the memory of man the infamy of the Crimson Executioner.
Yeah, this seems exactly what we've been looking yeah. for. From here, it looks great. Just what we need. I think we should be able to wrap up our work here in a day. Yeah, this'll look good. Come on, Nancy. Gosh, I'm stiff from that long ride. It's made to order. Yeah. You. Hmm, sure looks gloomy. How would you girls like to have a castle this old to live in? You'd have to be a creep to live in a place like this. I'd love to have a house like this all for myself. Imagine the peace and beauty of living all alone here. <laughs> You're a funny one, all right. <laughs> all right, girls. Wonder what it looks like inside. What's wrong? Are you tired? I don't know what it is, Perry. I just feel very uneasy. No. Susie. Let me alone, Raoul. Don't be like that, baby. Everybody will see it. Have it your way. Are you all dead? Lay you any odds you want, our dear publisher will wind up saying, this place isn't suitable after all. Let's go home. Hello, is everybody out? If they're all out, how can anyone be in the house? Huh, the brain has spelled it out. I'm not just a dumb blonde, you know. Who says you're a blonde? You must be in Hello, here. why doesn't anybody answer? Maybe nobody lives here. What a nuisance. Someone should have told me the castle's empty. We might as well try to get in anyway. Maybe one of the boys could scale that wall. That's a job for Tarzan. Who's going to volunteer to climb the wall? <laughs> okay, okay. Here comes Uncle Perry, the greatest acrobat in the world. Then he gets us inside. Yeah, you're right. Three years for unlawful breaking and entering. Take care, Perry. Tell me a bonus for this little stunt, a double whiskey. <laughs> uh, what about that? I still think you're playing with fire. Ah, you should know me by now. I'm not the kind of man to let obstacles get in my way. I'm a man of action. Well, what do we do now? We follow the leader. What else? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the old well, family. Right. Let's go. <laughs> this is. Looks like a Frankenstein film set.
There's something evil about this castle. I'm sure of it. You Hawaiians are far too impressionable, Kinuyo. <laughs> Childish jokes all the time. Raoul. Raoul. Take off that silly costume. <gasps> These uninhabited castles always have their family skeleton. Uninhabited? There's not a trace of dust around here. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm very sorry. Nobody answered the doorbell and we thought the castle was empty. Could we speak to the owner? I'd like a word with him about a business matter. Could you take us to him? Follow me. Let's go. The rest of you wait in there. Stop where you are. How dare you force your way into my castle like this? What do you want here? I want to apologize. We didn't think anyone lived here, that's all. It's no excuse for trespassing. I don't like having my privacy disturbed. I'm sorry, sir. You're quite right. My name is Parks. I'd like to explain. We've been scouting for suitable locations to photograph material for book jackets. I'm a publisher. That's no concern of mine. Look here, I'd like to show you one of my books. I'm preparing an anthology of horror. He told you to stay where you were. We took the liberty of coming in here, only because no one answered our knocking at the door. I don't like intrusion. I insist that you leave my castle immediately. Could you make just one exception? We've been on the road for several days. Everybody's so tired. I don't want any visitors here. I'd be only too glad to pay, of course. Pay? Now you're beginning to annoy me, Mr. Parks. Uh, I know my friend didn't mean to offend you, and we ask you to forgive us. Everybody, we've been told to shove off. The master of the house doesn't like having visitors around. What? Again? Oh, no. Not after all I went through to get you in here. So we're right back where we started. One castle's too modern, one's too old. Why don't we build our own and get it over with? Susie, but wouldn't it cost an awful lot of money to build one, huh? Oh, can't you change his mind? We're all tired. Well, I'm tired, too. But we have no choice. With the toll to go, and that's it. Let's get moving quickly, huh? Oh, Edith. Wait. Perhaps I was a little too hasty, Mr. Parks. I'm not usually so inhospitable. I realize you must all be very tired. You see, I don't usually receive people. You can stay here overnight. But I'll have to ask you to leave first thing in the morning. Thank you, sir. We really do appreciate your kind hospitality. Do you mind if we take a few pictures? All right. 
But please remember, I don't like to be disturbed. My servants will show you the chambers where you can do your work. Perfect. Let's get to work, girls. We mustn't waste any time. Go and change, quickly. Dermot, you'd better check out the setting we need. Edith, you go along with it. Good girl. Come on, Edith. Don't go near the dungeons. They're absolutely out of bounds for everybody. Okay, we won't. Get moving, Dermot. We're in a hurry. I'll bet Max will flip over this one. Can you imagine finding a thing like this here? Wasn't it lucky? I'll take credit for that. I found it. Yeah. Food for everybody. Hey, Max, I want a bonus for finding this thing. All right, we'll see about the bonuses. Now eat It'll quickly, be huh? perfect for the Skeletrix series. Hey, that fine, looks great. Boys, fine, but now let's get to work. Uh, I'll take the food to the girls, right? No, I'll take care of that myself. <clears throat> <clears throat> This will What's all this nonsense? I'm just like a father to you girls. Turn around. We have to get into our costumes. <sighs> okay, have your little games, but hurry up. We haven't any time to fool around. We've got work to do. You can turn around now if you want. Edith, bring the girls downstairs. We can't afford to waste any time. All right. How's the food? Mm, terrible. As usual. Nah, bottle of wine, they call it. It tastes like water. <laughs> yeah, it's awful, isn't it? But I know where we can find real wine. I discovered where the cellar is. Come on, I'll show you. See ya. Come on, Larry. mind being the owner of this castle. You can have it. It gives me the creeps. Skeletons don't have nerves. What do you mean it gives you the creeps?
Now don't breathe. Perfect like that. Hmm. All right. Hold the pose. I want to take another shot. Uh, Edith, hand me the other camera, will you? Thanks. Now don't move, darling. Hold it. You make a beautiful corpse, you do. Just keep it. That's right. It's no fun being dead. Nobody ever said it was. You mean it? You were very convinced. Okay, oh, just come imagine on, what Daddy will one. say when he sees this photo. And go and change now. Yeah. Okay, Susie, it's your turn now. Sure, here I am. But where's Perry? He's in it, too. Here I am. <laughs> your personal skeleton. Always ready to die at the hands of a beautiful woman. No, How are you going to change him? Annie's first? That's fine. You're never around when you're needed. Right, but look what I dug up for you. Oh. <laughs> I'll go. Got it. <laughs> Rick, can I have your knife a minute? Thanks. Can you What is it? Just a little homesick, I guess. Are you all asleep over there? Get behind that camera, Dermot. See, honey, give me the feeling of a cat. You know what I mean. Meow. 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 No, Nancy, that's too domesticated. I want you to think wild, fierce. Meow. 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 Can't you think like an alley cat? For instance, you're about to fight another cat for a fish head or something. Meow. No, no, Nancy, that's the intellectual approach. You'll never be an alley cat. Let's try something else. I've got an idea. There. Now, raise your leg up. Up, up, up. Oh. up. That, 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 that's it. That's it. Now, imagine you're floating in the air like a thistle blown by the wind. That's it. Beautiful. No, no, not like that. You've got to go up. Gently. That's right, baby. Now, hold it. No, no. Can't you keep that arm over your head? Now everything's in place. Arm, leg, head, everything. Now, don't move. Come on, Nancy, get that lovely foot of yours up, like a feather, like a thistle blown by the wind. No, no, I can't, Dermot. It's too heavy. Uh, I can't. Oh, do it for me, baby. Let's fly together, hold it. It's bathroom break time, sickies. We'll be waiting for you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, this looks like a good place to take a break. Hopefully you missed the opening part of the show and are just tuning in because, well, nothing happened. <laughs> You're a funny one, all right. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Anywho, I am Sicko Psychotic, your marvelously malevolent host. And tonight, you are privileged to be watching with us, Bloody Pit of Horror. You're not kidding. It's giving me a bad case of hemorrhoids. Can there actually be a sense of humor trapped in there? He may be obnoxious, but he's the only talking camera obscura in the entire block. But we won't take any more time explaining that. After all, he is just a prop. Who is he talking to? It seems that Silky is as anxious to get back to the movie as the rest of us. Speak for yourself. You call this a movie? I thought it was a Hugh Hefner special. Are there actually people out there watching us? Don't refer to them as people. Our viewers may get insulted. <laughs> Why are you just sitting there? Call the police. This ill-looking stranger murdered me. Help! 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 <laughs> Don't pay him any mind. He's a bit chisel and an amateur. Doesn't quite get the concept of being on a horror show, but we'll break him in soon enough. And then this box movie projector, this thing. The hell is your name anyway? Wouldn't you like to know? What was that? Cameo? Cameo? That's not what I said. Cameo, cameo, cameo. How appropriate. Well, sickies, if we're going to give Cameo here a crash course on the business of horror, we better be getting back to the movie. My name is not Cameo. It is Horatio. Horatio Hughes. Kazuna! <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? What have I ever done to you? And he's right. Why are we keeping Cameo here from showing us the rest of this fiendishly freaky flick? First, you break into my shed. Shack. It's now called the Sick Shack. Then you murder me, trap my soul in this box, violate me from behind with a horrid picture you seem to mistake for cinematic entertainment. You get the feeling he's not enjoying himself. And, at an insult to my endless degradation, you refuse to acknowledge me by my rightful birth name. I get it. You're having a bad night. Well, the rest of the movie should cheer you up. It's got a large cast, so you know there's going to be plenty of bloodshed. <laughs> You're insane. Around here, we prefer to use a politically incorrect term, psychotic. Now, on with the show. Oh, what did you do? It's happening again. No! What are you doing here? I'd like to see the owner of the house. It's not possible. My master doesn't want to be disturbed. But tell him... I said it's impossible. Your master has a right to his privacy, but that's no way to speak to a lady. Rick. You met the owner of the house. What's he like? It's difficult to say, really. He was half hidden behind a table. Have you noticed the windows? They're all barred. What a strange place. If I was still a reporter, I bet I could discover a lot of interesting facts about this castle. Rick, but why are you wasting your time on horror stories? You should be doing the kind of work you were cut out for, reporting. Oh, I guess you're right, but I'm a little lazy. I've been taking the easy way out by doing this. I started out with the usual dreams and found out there's more money in writing this kind of commercial book. Edith, I realize I'm being indiscreet. But why did you want to speak to the owner of the castle? Just curiosity. Nothing more than that. Everything's ready, Dermot. Can I go? Not more than a few minutes, though. Time's running short. You bet. Come on, Susie. Don't pull me like that. Then come on. But where? Oh, come on. Okay, I'm all set. Everybody out of the way. 
That's right. Hold that pose, Perry. Don't move. I'll be done in a minute. Now, here we go. Yell. I didn't hear anything at all. Come along. Where are you taking? You'll find out. Look at that. What is it? I don't know. Maybe it was an old torture cell. You know these old castles. <laughs> Nothing in it. Let me alone, Raoul. I'm scared. Susie. Susie. There's no point in disturbing my master. He's been informed already of what has happened down here. And he hopes that you will all remain calm. The rope was badly worn, Rick. We overlooked that, I'm afraid. Well, what are you going to do now? Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Remember, Rick, even the master of the house suggested that we keep calm. Tomorrow we notify the police. What do you mean, tomorrow? Listen. After all, it was only an accident. A tragic one. But an accident. And besides, it's too late now. Look, Max, this double talk leaves me cold. What do you really mean? Well, I'm an editor. You've got to see my point. I have a deadline to meet. I know exactly how you feel, girls. But we must finish our work before daybreak. With poor Perry lying dead? Oh, it's a big tragedy. You know, Perry was like a son to me. Don't you think I have a heart like hmm. the rest of you? How do I know? I never had a chance to see it. <sighs> Perry would have known what I meant. Yeah, but he's dead. And I want to go on living. I'll double your salary. My life's worth more than that. Triple it. Okay, it's a deal. Me too. Then let's get back to work. Where's Susie? I think she went off with Raoul. It's just like her. They always disappear at the wrong moment. We'll worry about her later. Let's go back to work now. Well, I thought I'd seen just about everything. But this kind of bargaining is really more than I can stand. Ray, look at this. Huh? What is it? It's the negative of the photograph I took right when the accident occurred. Oh, Perry. What a terrible thing. What's this? What's that strange shadow near the frame of the door? That almost looks like a man's head. Yes, it does. That's exactly what I thought. But it just can't be. Still, it does look like a man's head with a hood on.
This is the maximum enlargement I can make here. Of course, it's still not very clear. Hmm. Now, this doesn't help us very much, I'm afraid. It's hardly at all visible. Huh? Do you think the negative could have been defective? No, it was perfect. May I see that photograph? I heard about the accident that took place tonight. A most appalling accident. Unfortunately, it's blurred. Yeah, it was out of focus. Perhaps this will sound strange. But I have something to tell you that may provide an explanation of the shadow in your photograph. Have you ever heard of the Crimson Executioner? Who did you say? The Crimson Executioner? He was a maniac and a killer who was put to death for his crime centuries ago. He was buried in his own castle. What you don't know is that this is the castle where the Crimson Executioner lived and died. When I came here, the castle had been uninhabited for centuries. For me, it was ideal because I desired solitude. Everybody else feared the curse that had been placed on it. When they sealed up his tomb, the Crimson Executioner swore that he would avenge himself. He was a man of extraordinary physical strength. Obsessed by an ideal of purity. For centuries, he was entombed. There in the dungeons, and only a seal has protected mankind from his supernatural powers. If the shadow in the photograph is the Crimson Executioner, I fear anything might happen. I had to tell you. Well, I can see you two already know each other. I've never had the pleasure. This is the first time I've seen this lady. I must retire now. I'm a creature of habit. I hope you will sleep well. Good night. Edith, I, I know the accident upset you. You're terribly tired. What happened was a very bad shock for you. Stop crying now. Go to Canoe, you Hi, girls. Has Susie come back yet? No, maybe we should go on without her. She'll be along. You'll make a big hit in that costume, Annie. Won't I, too? What? Oh, no, what's gotten into you? You mustn't hide those beautiful legs of yours. Crimson Executioner has now come. I've been wondering about the owner of this castle. Well, if you want my opinion, I think he's slightly off his mind. You would be, too. If you lived isolated in this place, you'd end up the same way he is. <laughs> hey, Dermot. Yeah? Look at this. This must be where the Executioner was killed, if the legend is true. What is it? it looks like a coffin. No, it was a medieval instrument of torture. The infamous Iron Maiden. say that this was an accident. wasn't worn, was cut. At this point, there's only one explanation. Deliberate murder. 
deliberate murder. But why, Rick? It doesn't make any sense. That's what we've got to find out. Any idea where Raoul is? Raoul? No, no, I don't mean he had anything to do with this. But perhaps he saw who did it. He was near Susie all the time. Here, take this. My car is the fastest we have. Go to the nearest police station and try and get help. Okay, Rick, I will. But how about you? Hmm? What are you going to do? Stay here? With a murderer at large, you're all in danger. I know, but it's impossible to leave with things as they are. And we've got to find Raoul. He might have some evidence. I'll be as fast as I can. How much longer do we have to wait now? We get paid. Why should you care? Yeah, you get pretty by the minute, girls. Take a look at this, Max. I have a new idea. I don't want the girls to know this yet. Susie's been murdered. What's that? So you like the idea? Oh, sure. It's great. You better watch out. Dermot's already on his way to the police station. Don't tell the girls. They'd only get panicky. But then Barry was killed, too. We completely agree. Well, what do we do now? I'll have a look around. You'd better stay with the girls. See you later. your master right away. No, he doesn't want to see anybody. It's urgent that I see him no matter what, understand? I said you can't see him. <clears throat> Peter, what are you doing here? I want you to see what I found. I'm sure you recognize it. Peter, what's your portrait doing in this castle? Then you do know the owner. Yes, Travis and I were engaged. Travis Anderson. Isn't he the actor who disappeared several years ago? Yes, he used to be a muscle man in costume films. It all happened so suddenly, so unexpectedly. He left without a word. He just vanished. He's always been a little strange. Even with me, he seemed so cold. Yet I'm certain that he really loved me. In all this time, I haven't stopped wondering why he ever disappeared like that. Now I found him here in this castle. I thought I recognized his voice, and now that I've found this, I know it's Travis. I must try to speak to him. Edith, we have no time for that. You've got to trust me. What is it? I'll tell you later. Where's Canuglio? I left her downstairs when I went to find Travis. There's not a moment to lose. We must find her. What's happened, Rick? Don't ask any questions. Hurry. We've got to reach the others. It's important that we all stay together. But what's going on? I don't understand. Can you hear? For me, I know it. You must save yourself while there's still a chance. Don't you see? It's a diabolical trap. It's impossible for anyone to reach me. These wires are connected to the bones on the wall. The slightest touch will release the arrows in every direction, and anyone nearby will be killed. Nobody can stop the mechanism that operates. The spider. It has poison in its claws. I'll be killed. The moment it reaches me. Now it's hopeless. Watch out, Rick. Don't do it, Rick. You'll be killed. I tell you it's hopeless. Don't do it, 
Frederick, leave me. It's no use. <laughs> No use. We've been locked in. No. What do we do? Max! Max, what's happening? Where are the others? I don't know, but don't lose your head. Just come on down here. Go and tell Rick that we need him. All right. We have to get out of here. Rick! Rick, all the doors are locked. We can't get out. Keep calm, Edith. We'll make it somehow. Just a minute. Any nearer. Don't touch me. 
You were the murderer. Now I know it, Travis. How could you? You're a monster! A monster! Oh! 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 You. You no longer mean anything to me. Even though I missed you when I abandoned the world. I was forced to retreat to this castle. Mankind is made up of inferior creatures. Spiritually and physically deformed. Who would have corrupted the harmony of my perfect body. I know I'll be back. And then I'm gonna eat you. When this dead hand moves, the monster created by a man they called Mad is turned loose to strike terror into the hearts of men. <laughs> to shock women into uncontrolled hysteria. Elizabeth! <laughs> to prey upon the innocence of children. This is the story you've heard about, talked about. The spine-tingling, blood-chilling story that stuns your emotions. Frankenstein! Don't touch that! Dynamation. This is Dynamation. This is Dynamation. This is Dynamation. Dynamation will be brought to the screen for the first time in color with the release of Columbia Pictures' The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Dynamation is a new process which utilizes new technical and scientific advances in electronics and color to open up vast new vistas in motion picture entertainment. Some of this demonstration film is being projected in color, some in black and white. But the feature picture itself is entirely in color. Anything the mind can conceive can now be brought to the screen. As for example, this scene from The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, in which the Princess Parisa, played by Catherine Grant, is reduced to doll size by the magician Sokura. The outflung arm of the sleeping princess actually shrinks before your eyes. This effect was achieved by taking the camera back slowly for 40 feet. To prevent the slightest movement of the arm, Catherine Grant was tied to a stake, remaining motionless and scarcely even breathing. The pillow on which the princess sleeps while the magician is shrinking her was 25 feet high and 40 feet wide. It occupied one full corner of a sound stage in Madrid, Spain, where most of the picture was filmed. The princess, originally life-size, was reduced by shooting from 70 feet away. Finally, the various components of the sequence were put together in the Technicolor optical printer in London. In Dynamation, producer Charles Schneer and special effects expert Ray Harryhausen have combined animation, normal human action, and trick photo effects in color. Principal actors like Kerwin Matthews, who plays Sinbad, Catherine Grant, Richard Eyre, the genie of the magic lamp, and Torin Thatcher, the magician, are used in combination with three-dimensional figurines. The process has been years on the drawing boards and in actual testing with color film. 
In the seventh voyage of Sinbad, you will see the two-headed rock of the Arabian Nights Tales, a bird with the wing spread of a jet airliner. You will see it attack a shipload of sailors and carry Sinbad away in its talons. You will see a fight to a finish between a 50-foot cyclops and a 100-foot dragon. You will see an astonishing sword fight between Sinbad and a skeleton which comes to life at the magician's bidding. Every movement in this sequence was carefully plotted in advance with precise markings for Sinbad and for insertion of the skeleton. Matthews, playing Sinbad, was coached by Italian Olympic fencing coach Enzo Greco in endless rehearsals, during which the fencing master stood in for the skeleton. Later, the actor had to pantomime his every move without his opponent. Then the skeleton was inserted via dynamation to match the movements of the fencing instructor. The seventh voyage of Sinbad is the eighth wonder of the screen. Mr. Nasty, no. stab that one viewer awake. There, that's better. <laughs> the spider scene was classic. Get it? Classic. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. I nearly coughed up a red thing. Rancid. That's what this picture is. I will never get rid of the taste of this bile. <laughs> Silky and I are rather enjoying the film. Sadly, we can't say the same about your company. Then set me free from this demeaning existence immediately. Cheer up, Cameo. Have a red vein. No? Horatio. My name is Horatio Hughes. 
Gesundheit. <laughs> it doesn't get old. <laughs> Why must you play these childish jokes all the time? Listen, Miss Poopy Head. While you're over there, why don't you see if you can find yourself a sense of humor? Enough of this farce. I demand that you release me from this purgatory you trapped me in. Look, the movie is halfway over. You don't want to disappoint those scowling faces at home, do you? Yes, I do. They should be in bed praying for forgiveness. It's a lack of blood, isn't it? With a title like Bloody Pit of Horror, you'd expect to see plenty of gore. Trust me, Squarehead, it'll pay off. I do not care for violence or gore. What is wrong with this guy? Maybe this will lift your spirits. While I was rummaging through your personal belongings, I happened to come across this worn out video copy of West Side Story. OMG, no. So, if you're real good and quit your bitching, I'll let you and Silky watch it all by yourselves. No, no, not that. Yeah, I'd watch it with you, but uh, I have this health condition that prevents me from watching ugh, family films. Burn it, destroy it, get rid of it. My wife used to drive me mad playing that movie over and over again. Singing those annoying songs non-stop, all day, every day. I wanted to strangle her pretty, oh so pretty, neck. Uh-oh, he's got a wife. Ah, uh, Mary, you said. And where exactly is the little darling now? Perhaps Silky and I could send her a message, or, better yet, we could bring her here and give her our condolences. Uh, back in England, maybe? I don't know. She left me. Why doesn't that surprise me? You wouldn't happen to be lying to me, are you? Oh, but, but I know. Not at all. I must have packed some of her stuff by accident when I moved to the U.S. of A. I thought you said that she left you first. Why are her belongings in that suitcase? Oh, you're getting me all confused. Putting absurd rubbish inside me and forcing me to project it to gawky viewers sitting around at home in their underwear. Some of them aren't even wearing any. Actually, we're supposed to pretend we don't notice that. You should be ashamed, Mr. Psychotic. Murdering and exploiting a grieving man who came to the strange foreign country with the noblest of intentions of drowning in my sorrow and woe. Yeah, I'm so not interested. Why don't we get back to the film before you put me to sleep? But before we do. Huh? But stop that! Get your hands off of me! I'm just making sure I get a season's worth of movies out of here. came to the isolation of this castle to avoid the contagion of human sentiment. And a woman's love. Would have destroyed me. It's because of that, I abandoned you. Travis, you've lost your sanity. You're an egotist. 
obsessed with your sick thoughts. You're wrong, Edith. Last night I had a moment of weakness because of you. When I first caught sight of you, and I said you could stay together with your friends, but that was a mistake. I know of only one who was never overcome by weakness. The Crimson Executioner. He despised your world. As passionately as I do. Look at him. Look at him. His magnificent body was preserved intact through all these centuries undisturbed. His spirit lives in me, and I'll continue his mission of vengeance. This is the sacred duty I've sworn to. We're alike. Now that you have profaned his tomb and broken the seal that imprisoned his great spirit, his power has been released at last. And his noble crusade against sin lives again through me. Yes, the black fire of the long-awaited vengeance is here. Your friends cannot escape. The Crimson Executioner has passed judgment. And now, at last, you'll witness the glory of his return. You'll pay just like the others. <laughs> Travis! Don't do it! Come back! Oh, my God. 
of the torture that awaits you. I promise you that none will escape the wrath of the Crimson Executioner. As for Rick, this is how he will die. Why are you doing this? Why don't you let us go? What have we done to you? You're torturing innocent people. Come back to your senses. You're the owner of this castle. Not the Crimson Executioner. Oh, see. I am the Crimson an executioner invented the torture of icy water for creatures like you. 
needs blood. The crimson executioner cries out for blood. started flowing or what? Unless, of course, you're watching the censored version of this show. If that's the case, your life sucks. Yes, the blood is spilling and we haven't even gotten to the movie's climax yet. Actually, I'm pretty sure the Crimson Executioner reached his climax when he started ogling himself in front of the mirror. That's exactly what I thought. But it just can't be. Oh well, to each his own. Literally. Someone, please put me out of my misery. It reminds me of my unfaithfully faithless henchman back in Schlockyvadia. You won't mention his name. Curse his wretched soul. Oh, the halls were always filled with the sound of enthusiastic screams of pain. What happened to your nameless henchman? Poor fool. He's probably still there entertaining the masses. <laughs> so. In other words, you ditched him when the angry townspeople raided the castle. That's one way of putting it. Oh, he would have been so proud. <laughs> Is this what crying sounds like? <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. You murdered me after all. Are, are you starting that up again? For the last time, I did not murder you! You had a... accident. Accident? You broke into my shed. I thought it was abandoned. You took a shovel and whacked me over the head with it. It was dark. I thought you were a rat. You then proceeded to chop me into small pieces. I don't believe in letting food go to waste. Wait a minute. Uh, you... Uh, you ate me? Uh, there's still some of you left in the cupboard if you get hungry. I think I'm going to be ill. You know, Cameo. Horatio, by day is Horatio. Well, I've been thinking, Cameo. That must have been difficult for you. As I was saying, I've been thinking. Did it hurt? Listen, Blockhead, I tell the jokes around here. When you come up with one, you'll be sure to let me know. Keep that up and I'll shatter you into tiny pieces. And then your soul will be scattered and divided into each and every one of them. Now, as I was saying, I conjured a corrupt soul to manifest itself inside this box. So, why is it that you happen to be trapped in there? Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure I don't know what you mean. You must have done it wrong. Oh, I don't think so. Me thinks that you're holding something back from me. I believe you must have done something truly horrendous in your mortal life. That's why you're trapped in that box. <laughs> Preposterous. <laughs> Me done something horrendous. <laughs> the idea. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I'm beginning to enjoy this movie you picked out. Bloody Pit of Horrors, you called it. Bloody Pit of Horror. Right. <laughs> uh, 
it, it's got action, uh, romance, drama, <laughs> simply wonderful. Uh, why don't we get back to the rest of it? Uh, I'm sure your viewers are dying to find out what happens next. <laughs> uh, see, a, a little gallows humor. Uh, I'm really getting into this. Better late than never, my former spouse always used to say, and say, and say, and say, <laughs> and say. We'll see you after the break. Apparently, it seems nothing else is on that you would deem worthy of watching. Sickies, it's me, Sicko Psychotic, the king of ghouls, who makes the carry-on drool. Need a touch of sin? Fear what you wear has got you covered. Literally. With its line of sizzling and comfortable shirt designs from Sin City's celebrated artist, Bradley Beard. Now, whatever happens in Vegas, you can take with you wherever you go. Own a part of the Desert Oasis' secret temptations. They're 100% heirloom combed and ring spun cotton and maintain their original shape after each wash. What's more, they're soft to the touch, even on decaying flesh. And they're made in the USA. You can wear any of Bradley Beard's numerous hot designs at fearwhatyouwear.com. That's fearwhatyouwear.com. Take it from this cruel ghoul, fear what you wear will have you looking cool while feeling hot. You're watching The Sicko Psychotic Show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
You mustn't worry about me. I'm not in danger. Try to find the others if you can, Rick. They're in Anderson's hands. He took them to the dungeon. He's insane. He thinks he's the Crimson Executioner. You've got to stop him, or he'll kill them all. Hurry, Rick! Yes, but where are you, Edith? Watch out! Get away with this. Let me out of here. I'll pay you anything you want. Uh, what are you going to do now? Uh, oh, this fire will purify your miserable soul. No, you're no. impure. This fire will cleanse you. No, you can't do this to me. Stop. 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 No, I don't want to die like this. No, no, let me out. Burn. Burn. No, I don't want to die like this.
your turn. Oh, Travis! You'll pay too. No! 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 Let me go! Stop! Let me go! Oh, Travis, don't! Don't! Oh, please stop! Oh, please let me go! Oh! You're mad! No! No! Don't do this to me! executioner has risen from his tomb. Your atonement has just begun. It's done. I killed the writer. Ah. It's not true. No. It's impossible. No. They all die. No, I can't stand this. No, I beg you, Travis. What you're doing is insane, Travis. No, I can't stand this. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> No, go away. I am the Crimson Executioner. Rick! It's impossible. It can't be. It's impossible that he's alive, I tell you. I killed him myself. I saw him die. It wasn't me you murdered. You hit the dead body of poor Ralph. I put his corpse on the tower and that's what your arrow hit. You'll have to try again. Kill him! Go on. Go on! Kill him, I said! Thank you.
He was completely mad. Like the Crimson Executioner, Travis was obsessed with a dream of absolute purity and physical perfection. That's why he retired to the isolation of this castle. Our intrusion into his world was too much for him. And it was then that he assumed the identity of the Crimson Executioner and decided to carry out the ancient legend of revenge. This striking resemblance to the real executioner made it easy for him to believe his own hallucination. Striking resemblance? Anderson and his folly created the legendary executioner in his own image. The crimson executioner has been dust for centuries. It was terrible. Please take me away from this castle. It was a nightmare. I won't write any more horror stories. The man that said life is stranger than fiction made no mistake. I was respectable before I showed up in this bad land of depravity. If you had any decency, which you obviously don't, you would make some sort of effort to free my soul from this container that's no bigger than the size of Tupperware. But then, that would be asking too much from an eight-legged garden pest who spends her leisure time snacking on flies as if they were a box of chocolates. Oh, come now. Don't blame yourself. You're just a dumb insect. I shouldn't expect much intelligence from you. You're an egotist. Obsessed with your sick thoughts. Huh? That sounded like my dead wife. Where did it come from? Ouch! Get away from me! I don't like you, wretched creature. Get off of me! Ah! Uh, she's biting me! She's trying to eat me! Help! Silky harlot! Stop uh, trying to eat cameo! Uh, you don't know where he's been! Why don't you put her outside? Or better yet, flush her down the toilet the way most people do with wretched spiders. I would shut up if I were you. I can't keep an eye on her all the time. Next time she might actually succeed in devouring you completely. And then your soul would be trapped inside a box, trapped inside a spider. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny when you think about it. I did nothing to provoke her. 
I was just sitting still over here waiting for you to return. Shh! Be quiet! Well, how rude. the sound of heavy breathing coming from outside. Like, like an obscene phone caller. You remember those, Silky? I used to love calling up the convict of the Celestines and doing my best impersonation of the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> that is utterly ridiculous. They didn't have phones during the French Revolution. That's what frightened them even more. <laughs> Keep that filthy creature away from me. I have never endured such maltreatment in my entire life. Well, it's a good thing you met us then, or you never would have. Except, maybe in Sing Sing. What are you implying? Sing Sing. Sing, sing. Was that one of your attempts at humor? Sing Sing. Sing Sing. My apologies. Inside joke. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> you do realize. Puns are only effective if the recipient understands the reference. Oh, yes. Well, I was out doing some last minute chopping. Odd. I felt like I was being watched the entire time. Any boo, I happened across this posted outside of Bale's bond office. What do you have to say to that? I don't get it. Of course you don't get it. This! This is you! It seems comedic talent and reason both elude you. Uh, would you like me to write your material for you? Wrong flyer! <laughs> okay, mister, I don't like violence. How do you explain this? Speechless now, are we? Let's read what it says. <clears throat> Dangerous fugitive wanted. British hotel clerk Horatio Hughes, age 39, was tried and convicted for the murder of his wife after having bludgeoned her to death with a video cassette of West Side Story. He has escaped from Sing Sing Correctional Facility in New York and is believed to be hiding somewhere in the city of Las Vegas. Must have watched too many video nasties while growing up. And this is your weapon of choice? Seriously? I'm gonna have to train you better than that. I wouldn't go making any plans on my behalf, sicko psycho. The psycho sicko, whatever your name is. Not when your own future is looking very bleak at the moment. Oh, really? And why is that? Because I don't believe that the man who has been watching us through the window for the last several minutes is here to borrow a cup of sugar. What man? I don't see anyone at the window. You're trying to distract me, but it's not going to... Perhaps he's here for the same reason that brought you here. Murder, I hope. Quick, Silky, hand me that video cassette. It's you! Well, Siggies, that's our show for the night. We appreciate you tuning in and watching with us. If I had to endure viewing such rot by myself, I'd... What Cameo means is we're glad you enjoyed the Super Shot Show. Be here next time for an incredible lineup featuring a freaky flick classic as well as the further weird adventures of Starman and the Sons of Hercules. I've got a question. And I've got your answer right here, so you better make it count. Where is Silky Hollett? Is she waiting for you to bail her out again for soliciting? <laughs> no, she's not awaiting bail. She's gone to our old location to pick up Aunt Clarice. Oh, I had forgotten about her. <laughs> 
Yeah, forget about her all the time as well. Usually it's intentional. Urgh. That's right, creepy critters. You heard right. That batty hag will be joining us on the next show. But don't let that discourage you. We guarantee it's going to be a scream. Ah, shut up.